Good morning, Survivor! This is Veduary42, and today we're going to be looking at another base build, specifically one that is using a technique I used back in Alpha 17, I believe it was, when we first got the powered vault hatches. And this is the completed base. However, through unforeseen circumstances revolving in uh, using the bloody Zoom application for my daughter's school conference that got my audio muted, my whole video is, well, without any commentary. And instead of trying to go back and reconstruct it, hey, I'm just gonna remake it. So this is the the first version of it and i'm gonna do something that is similar but not quite the same but hopefully better but uh isn't that a beautiful base that you will never actually get to see me build what a pity what a pity but anyway if you enjoy these base builds from me do leave me a like and hopefully you subscribe to my channel as well after finding out how everything works because it's really appreciated i do appreciate everyone who do subscribe to my channel because that allows me to grow and uh, just make more videos for everyone so we're going to start this and it's going to be using the powered hatches and we're going to start by just bringing it up on a platform you don't necessarily need to have a platform you could do this in a similar way by using a pit underneath you do run into the issues with that you have to have double layers of steel walls and everything to prevent just random bashes from the zombies trying to break in so instead we're just going to put it up on a platform because it's just a little bit easier and thank you very much can i get this yucca yucca plant so hopefully, uh, if you're not on my Discord, make sure you also join my Discord. Follow me on Twitter, then you'll get even more information when I'm dropping new videos. So well, let's make this three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six is probably a good way to start. I'm going to have a ramp up, and it's not going to be a ramp there. I'm going to try to do this one, not in a perfect way, but I'm going to sh make it one that should work f uh, quite well and that will give you sufficient information to construct this on your own, but in a way that sort of uh, works with your type of base layout. And again, I'm going to have a ramp up. Uh, if you've seen me do these ones in the past, uh, the reason is, and I get the question once in a while, zombie pathing is a little bit weird. Go away. Uh, zombies that come from this side will come up here now they will see this as basically a path up because this one is really uh, something they can walk on to however from this side there's no way to get here sometimes they will jump up sometimes they will bash and the way to simply just avoid that issue is that you just provide a smooth way up and usually that means that they'll come up here and they'll pop up and they can continue and it means that they will not be bashing which is helpful uh, here we're gonna do this one's gonna be let's see we're gonna have i'm gonna have a few different traps as well so we're not gonna have simply the hatches but we're gonna make some traps as well just to make it a bit more fun so we have now we have three here like that and we're gonna have something like nope not like that i have this one there there and there and you might be able to uh Think about what I would be placing there. I give you five seconds, four, three, two, one, and of course I don't have any on me, but it's gonna be blade traps. Blade traps are really good for these kind of corridors, especially now where zombie demolishers no longer set them off, right? Like this, really simple. And uh, we're gonna do a little bit more beyond that. So let me, I'm going to do just one layer here, but the, the general principle is going to be the same, I, that you can be replicating just across as well. So we're going to, well, let me see, we're not going to do that one. We're going to have the electrics, I'm sorry, the electric. We're going to have these, <clears throat> these ones here, actually not there. One up, adjust the arrow slits like that. And arrow slits here and here. And you probably can guess what's coming behind them. Of course, we will be putting in some uh, traps that, of course, I need to grab. So let's grab a few of these ones. And let's put them down like that. And now you see I cannot put one up above here, but we will be doing that as well. So let's start with this one. And behind that, we will be putting in, and let's, uh, let's keep this one this one i don't think we need do we have any uh, like 
I don't need this one either. We're going to need that one, and we're going to need the... Where's the electric fence? Fence, fence, fence. Here we go. So the trick is to put a tripwire behind it. And then we're going to have... <clears throat> let's see here. Something like this. We're going to have an electric fence. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. Was offset so that it's incorrect. And like that. And let's take this out. Now you obviously you need to protect these ones better as well. So now I have these ones, and we also want to, as a result, uh let's see. Let's do this. Because you do need to protect them, and then protecting them also allows you to put in another layer there. Where's my dot trap? There it is. And now we're going to put, yes, something like this. Looks like it's laying on the side, which is probably is. So now we have two draw traps on this side. And we're going to put, of course, a, another draw trap on this side too. Of course, this has nothing to do with the actual uh, powered vault hatches. This is just to give you sort of an idea of how you can make the initial part of the corridor. So now we have basically dual dart traps, always good to have. And there's space to put basically another bunch of them here as well. So as the ward becomes more difficult, you can basically just put in more of them. And then these ones are in the wrong. It's going to be these ones. We'll put these ones in. Right? You can see how this basically gets shaped up. So like this. Okay, so we are going to be finishing that up and hooking it up in just a moment not yet so now we have let's say six here seven and we're gonna do let's do like this another one we're gonna do three two four like that and something like this and we do the same thing here and this is where we will be starting to put in the hatches vault hatches vault hatches and Oh, powered ones, which is just what we want. Now, uh, let's see here. We, you don't want to have them here. Let's flip them upside down. Ah, uh, that looks so ugly, though. Okay, let's not make it that ugly. Let's uh, do like this then. We can actually put in more dot traps here if you want to. You don't have to, obviously. It can be useful if you find yourself being overwhelmed and also to sort of increase the utility of this base. But, oh, no, let's bring it back. And now that we have this one, now we can put it like this. Like this, and we're gonna put this. Oh, and that last one was unfortunately the wrong way. Hey, actually, see these ones, I, I hate sometimes that when you, depending on how you're standing, it will uh, basically flip in a different way. We wanna have them that they open up inwards very important that they open up inwards because otherwise zombies get, can get blocked by them and you don't want that so now these ones will open inwards which is what we want and then we are going to put in some uh, and actually we don't want steel Do we have any concrete ones are concrete you could to put steel but you know i'm going to show uh no, this one i'm going to show just using the reinforced concrete ones did i pick them up i did and I like to put them like this here. Um, you could do this a few different ways, but I'm going to simply... Uh, let's do like this. Bam, bam. And we're going to put them three high, I believe. Yeah, three high should be good. Like this. And the, these will serve as a barrier so that the zombies don't actually get in. If they get in, we have a bit more problem. So let's avoid that. Um, and let's do this here because we have a nice little space. We are going to let's see. Let's do a couple of ways here. I'm going to pull it out just like we did here. And of course, this one, uh, unlike this one, this one, I basically made it in an L shape. So the zombies cannot see you as they run in. They run in here and they can't see you. And then they'll come in here and you could do that as well. I'm just going to make a straight one. Uh, it has slightly diff different functionality. Straight one means that you can shoot them from the beginning. You can use their sort of a, as an XP cord as well. Much easier. Um, it does mean, however, that if you get cops up here, they will be vomiting immediately. And there's no chance of them getting killed by the, the traps on the side. So that's where there is a slight difference in how they actually operate. 
both both really do work though it's you know it, it's really up to you how you want to do it so let's say two out here one two and we're gonna do that one and one two do that as well let's prepare for everything and let's grab some more of these ones so this is what i would consider probably um I would probably call it a semi semi cheese space. It's fairly fairly low on the cheese scale though, simply because it's actually the only a uh, cheesy part that it's using right now. And we're gonna put these ones in here. Is that uh, it's luring them up on a platform? If we weren't doing that, if you did this uh, sort of down with a pit instead, it would be less cheese, but also it takes a fair bit more effort to construct because you have the issue with the zombies trying to bash through. Let me get I have wire tool. I do need to get a generator and a rater. Hooking these things up is generally actually very straightforward. There can be some challenges with doing it depending on uh, access and everything, uh, depending on how wide you make the corridor and stuff like that. Engine, let's get a few more. Okay. This one, that. So you sometimes have to take a little bit of care with that. Refuel. Oh, no fuel. Gas. Get some gas then. Pump in this. Okay, so we're gonna also take a switch is good. I'm gonna have one of these and I'll show you in a moment why we we'll put this one there actually. Hey, hello. You're on not yet, not yet. Just wait a little bit. Oh <gasps> wow. That took out what did it take out? Wow, it took out all of his lower body there oh that was a good shot anyway so um now let's do this and uh, these ones let's uh do something like that All right because we want to have a, a we want to have a few different of the switches here so let's start with one so uh we're also going to have a relay where's a relay relays are good this one have the normal relay oh here's another one so we're gonna put this one uh, one here actually so the first thing i'm gonna do i'm gonna do something that connects all these things back there so we're gonna do probably this one and uh, so i can turn off and on i'm gonna then have this one yeah i know you want to go up there and and play around with things but not yet not yet so this one then is where we're pulling the power the first thing to do is to go to the tripwire a and the order is actually really important and uh, again when you're building this one it's, it's often easier if you don't block off everything like i did here since i'm in creative mode i can just pass through which makes connecting a little bit easier even if there are blocks in, in the way so tripwire a to tripwire b now, this one is the one that dictates whether anything gets fired off, whether there's any electricity passing through. So when this one is tripped, you take power from this one, not from the other one. I see that mistake uh, happening. Sometimes people actually pull power from this one and you don't do that. It doesn't work. So then we go from here to the electric fence B. We also go from here to dot trap. We all go from here to the dot trap. Now from this electric fence, we go all the way if you actually, yep, all the way back here. So now you have the electric fence triggering as well. And you also, what I like to do is uh, just take the power from, let's say this dot trap to this one and from this one to this one. What does this mean? Well, if this one gets triggered, everything should actually work. So let's drop off this one some more I put it in. And putting in the same amount of ammo is fairly useful when you're just testing things out because it means that if you miss hooking one up, it's really easy to see because the other ones have different amount of uh, residual or darts left on it. So let's do turn on like that. So if I then myself walk up here, I trigger it and I miss the electric fence. Now that's the something that uh well let me let me let me show you that as well so let's start with uh bring in some zombies and I'll, I'll go through that thing you saw the first time i actually walked in it actually missed me hey come on here 
So he should be walking up here and it should be hit by the... You saw? He actually triggered it, but he wasn't electrocuted. And it's one of those really weird things. I'm not sure whether that's something that they have done intentionally. Or... Okay, stop, stop, stop. Okay, stop, stop, stop. So you saw, uh, they both trigger the, the, the wire. Um, the first one didn't actually get electrocuted. The second got electrocuted, but it's even further. It's like one block ahead. And this is something that has changed. It has changed in uh, these versions several times, actually. Um, they used to actually run past like this. Then they would actually stop and get hit here. And now they seem to run past again as well. And that causes a bit of an issue because a dot trap here might actually still be missing it because of being slightly to the right here. And this one will not hit. So they've made that a little bit less predictable as well. Another thing that you saw, obviously, was that, and let's get in a janitor here, that uh, one of the zombies walked past without setting it off like this. And people were saying that it looks like the janitor actually seems to set it off even less compared to other zombies. And let's see if that's the case here as well. Yeah, it could be that for some reason, either the janitor... If a zombie is not properly properly configured but it seems like it's actually not setting off trip wires all right let me guys do a bunch more oh here let's do some normal ones as well you see not setting up the the trip wires at all and could be uh, intended it could be a mistake, but be aware, this seems to be something that is happening, that it's not setting off trip wires. And that is actually a bit of a problem, because a lot of these, um, a lot of these bases actually use trip wires as a way to trigger things. And uh, that's a bit of a frustrating thing that that is no longer working. I'm going to try something different, though. I'm going to use trigger plate as well just to be aware i don't know whether that's the uh, uh, something that is broken or not actually let's break in a uh, um arlene hello arlene are you gonna set off yes of course she because she's just walking and uh, she'll just stop here as well let's clear this one so what we're gonna do here we're also going to put in two trigger plates and we, since we're here, we might as well actually do that here. So what we're also going to put in, we're going to take from this power, we're going to go to the first trigger plate. From that trigger plate, we are going to go to the second trigger plate. This is the second, the right one, and that's important because this trigger plate is then going to be hooked up there, and it's going to be hooked up there. So if something walks there, all the, uh, all the trigger plates here, uh, sorry, the trigger plates will fire regardless of which one it is. If I go down here, you see, oh, am I getting hit there? I guess I am, but I would be, I guess my hat, all right, I guess my hat is uh, taking a lot of damage here, uh, I need to repair, I do, a little bit, so let's do a, just a quick verification, just to make sure that uh, even the janitor is setting off the, yeah, and he gets killed. Oh, okay, he didn't get killed, but he gets hit, hit at least. So, uh, there's a problem with using these ones in general. Oh. That was interesting. Nail. I actually didn't know you can trigger them by shooting at them. Oh. Hmm. This opens up for some interesting... Oh, Tri triggering trigger plates with a nail gun. That's really interesting way of doing it. Okay, I'm going to have to play around with that more because that's pretty cool. I mean, it takes a little bit of damage. No, does no repairing can't. Okay, repairing also spins. But anyway, so I'll, I'll, I'll deal with that in another, a different video. So uh, trigger plates are not as preferred as trip wires because... Uh, trigger plates can take damage from zombies. If there's an explosion there, like a cop, the generally the trip wires. Oh, oh crap! 
uh, will be safe because they're back there but these trigger plates can actually take damage but you know it is what it is uh, you can also use motion sensors and that would probably work fairly well as well if you want to have everything just uh, as set off when the zombie is spotted but let's do this let's connect the second one as well i'm going to do that again trigger plate one to trigger plate two trigger plate two to that one and to that one this is called signal pass through if you have two triggers that are connected directly to each other without having something else in between so no relays and everything it means that either one that is being triggered will cause um uh, electricity to pass through which means that if someone steps there it will trigger it there also and the, they will start spinning so it's really useful to use and if you want to have two of them that requires this one and that one you have to put a relay in between so um but now we have this this up and running and uh, right and the same thing should be done here we will let's see here let's do take it from here as well we're gonna take this one it's going to go across to this one. This one is also going to go to the electric fence. It's going to go to the bottom one. Bottom one's going to go to that top one. We're going to have the bottom one actually also going across to the bottom one. That goes to the top one. And then the final thing is that we're going to have this one going to this one. Right. Pretty good, right? Now we have all this working. So if, see if I walk here. Yep, you can hear the the swish, and you can hear the very faint, maybe the dart traps being firing. Because I haven't put anything in. So this will work as well. You can have multiple as well. I didn't put in any blade traps here. You could do the same thing and put blade traps. Just this is the sort of the the final piece, and you know it's enough to have a couple of blade traps here. But you could do that here as well. Now. The thought here was that if we let's say let's let's do it this way let's have this one control the the drop let's connect this one down to oh I didn't have anything here let's do it this way and we we'll put one here so what I was going to do and uh, it's an easy way of doing it, is that I put this one here this one goes over there and if anything is triggered then i basically and actually i'm going to put in another relay where is my relay no relay 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 All right, let's do this so this one controls where anything is triggered so we're going to have this one and we're then going to connect all these ones so we're going to do this connect this connect because these are vault hatches, you can actually connect them one by uh, to each other. So it would be enough if I took power to, let's say, this one, and this one went down, you know, at the, all these ones. These ones have a fair bit of uh, hit points anyway, so they're unlikely. 21,000? Wow. Okay, they are not going to be destroyed then. So let's, <laughs> let's do that slightly differently then. Wow, they have a lot of hit points. Let's say, let's say take power from this one, and then we basically do the same thing here. Uh, then you get less wires that are just uh, being in the way. I didn't know they had that much hit points because it means they will never be destroyed. So yeah, let's do it this way then. Looks a little bit neater. The problem here though is that, let's do that, with Mr. Janitor not setting off the trip wire, you see nothing is happening. And this is not really good. What the? He jumped really high. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. So, uh, whether he's broken or not, it means that we have to change this design a little bit because it will not be sufficient to trigger off uh, the drop. Let's do that. We're going to put in a motion sensor. Motion sensor is not what I normally would use because it's a little bit overkill, but if some zombies suddenly don't trigger things, you really need an alternate way of doing it. Um, in this case, um, I was also thinking about doing something like this that you didn't use the uh, trigger plate. Uh, sorry, you didn't use the trip bar here, but use the trip bar, a uh, trigger plate. Come on. Uh, so we could do something like this to this one and this one to over here. And this would work if you actually wanted to do this manually. So when you step on it, it opens. When you walk away, it closes. 
So you could take this as a full XP channel where you basically stand and shoot, or you stand and bash, bam. And when you get overwhelmed, you basically just step on it and it'll open up and drop everything down. That's one way of doing it. What we're also going to do is we are going to instead go to the motion sensor. And the motion sensor is going to go to the first one, which is going to set off everything. And because this one needs to be realigned, we're going to do like something like this. And we're going to trigger on oh, zombies, not ourselves. Simply like this. And in power duration, what instant I think should be enough. You might have to set it to one second, but I think it should be enough for now. This one is still broken. So now we don't use the trip R for that. We use this one instead. And let's do uh, let's do Darling Feral. C comes up here. Falls down. She would have triggered them. She would have triggered things anyway. And he, as you see, even though he wouldn't trigger the oh, that's nice. And you see, actually, it sets off this one. And ah, perfect. See if we can get the. He doesn't trigger the trip bar, but he does trigger these ones and he comes up and he gets dropped down. So this actually should work really, really well. Want they run up. Yep, this is what we want. They get hit by the darts, they get hit by the blade traps. So most of them will be dying here. And again, this is where you'll be standing. You want to use a sort of an XP corridor. And here, take them out. Let's see what happens with them. Now we've turned off all these things. We still have this one working though. And this one is on as well. Let's turn this one off. They get through. Comes up here. And what? Did I turn this on? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, that's the wrong one. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, okay. So mistakes have been... No, 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 no. Okay, ladies, ladies. No, 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 no. Okay. Mistakes have been made. Mistakes have been made. Okay. Remember, we probably should uh, color code these ones or do them in a better way so you actually know which ones you are turning on and off. All right. Let's, let's, let's just get Joe. He, he's you know, nicer. Um, so this one is... Uh, I have the right one here? All right. Yes. Okay. So now it's correct. So uh, this one will, it will open them. Oh... Ooh. All right. Okay, so he does open it. Uh, can we probably want to do this then. Um, our duration, instant. Always. Err. Okay, so that's a bit of an issue then. So what's happening is that they're running up. Uh, some of them are dropping... And, but not all of them, so some are visible, and that causes it to... Um, hmm. Alright, this seems to work a little bit better, so I just uh, set it a little bit further back, one block uh, further back. Angling it a little bit so that it doesn't uh, look down here, so it doesn't see the zombies after they've fallen through. And as they come up here, this is what happens, they get dropped down. You will have some zombies that actually will be standing right there and oh they get dropped down we go through here they will be potentially standing here you could minimize that by simply having the blade trap or something uh, cover this area so that if something is here for instance you could have dart traps if they decide to stand here they'll be hit by the dart traps and get killed that way that means you have uh, even less of them standing here i'm not going to bother changing that around just now i'll do that off cam but uh, beyond that you see this works really well they come up opens up drops them momentarily they repath and say hey i don't know where to go so they start bashing on the side but then they recalculate again and they walk out here and they get dropped down there will be some damage on the side again this is not a fully cheese space so it is unavoidable to have a little bit of damage but that's all right a little bit of uh fun to repair afterwards as well i mean that's that's part and parcel of doing any bases right you don't want to have it 100 percent safe and welcome back. We are finally done again. So essentially the same. We will have our ramp up. Once we get to here, 
the trip wires and of course I turn everything off will be firing electric fans will be buzzing and unless it's the janitor zombies dart traps will sh be shooting and as they step on these ones the trigger plates the blade traps will start spinning of course you could have a motion sensor to do that as well either works same thing here as they come up here they will be triggering the blade traps take even more damage here right before this one i have put in its independent own uh, tripwire and dart traps for just to kill any that might be standing here trying to bash not strictly needed as we come up here the motion sensor will detect them and these ones will open up and they will fall they will yes i can sort of they will fall down here and oh there's, there's some loot there they'll then decide to restart and run back and again and again and again now as the player obviously you need a way in so what i've done i have put in here ladder up to a little door and we have everything here i didn't put it of course you can put in your bed and workbench and stuff like that if you want to do it. this just to show how it works i have a uh, bars up above which means that zombie vultures will be standing and vomiting at you but it means you can also kill them now if you're standing up here less likely you're standing back here even less likely but it means that you have some way of getting rid of the zombie vultures now if i turn everything on switch everything on as well as well we should be able to see how this actually works and let me yeah, let me do that let me get out here let's get a bunch of those uh, i don't know if he's been paused possibly okay let's do that they should be coming in they'll probably not make it through here anyway because let's see oh he might he might barely oh he didn't make it so a lot of the zombies will be dying here obviously not all but if they make it through like something like this he'll then come up here and fall down you saw the the dart trap was actually firing now this one could waste a little bit of darts as well depending so you might want to have an electric fence there and stuff like that i didn't put that in i'll leave that for you but he comes back and he dies but either way they will be detected by the motion sensor which will be opening these vault hatches the powered ones drop it down and this is you can tell that making this less cheesy non-cheesy uh, instead of using the not the slippery slope, but the booby the traps or the, the partial air block, which basically has a few of them. This one will do it. The quarter block will do it. The wedge tip will also do it, which is a little bit more cheesy, actually, because it abuses a, sort of the mechanic of pathing. This one doesn't do that at all. It's simply using electricity to accomplish something very similar. Not 100% as effective, especially because, uh, as you can tell, the janitor zombie... Let me get the janitor... Janitor. These ones don't be don't seem to be setting off the the trip wires at all, whether it's internal or not. It means that you have to have even more complexity by using motion sensors. But let's start the blood moon horde and see how it goes. And we're having the blood moon horde again, of course. And there's gonna be 16 concurrent zombies. Uh oh, there they're coming. Was that a dog? Oh, okay, it was just a quick nurse. The bunch of them coming here. There's even a vulture, two vultures, which is fine. You see that right above where I am. These one, as predictably, run in here, take damage, and there it opens, and they get dropped down. And this will continue the whole night. You see, it almost looks like they sink through the vault hatches, obviously because of how that works. And then they drop down, and the cop actually died. He could vomit. If you're unlucky, the vomit will be taking out some of the blade traps. Uh, in this case, I'm hiding, so less of an issue. They make it up there, get bust, and fall down. So with the maul coming in here, the blade traps are really, really effective. And of course, they will take... Let me get rid of this one, not this one. They will take some damage from the reflected damage. So uh, you might want to... Oh, let's do steel. Do I have any forged steel? Please, thank you. So... After each uh, fight, each Blood Moon Hall, you might want to make sure that you repair these ones. They might uh, break even during, but you know, it's not a major, major issue even if that happens. Let's do that. See how effective this is. And again, 
minimal cheese because we are not using any weird pathing or anything. We are only using a sort of a clever way of utilizing vault hatches and the motion sensors. So let me get back into my character here, not the rewards. And this is where you could be standing, tagging them, getting some experience, shooting in the face. And let's see, do I have, I can use a sniper if I wanted to. That's probably a pretty good way of doing it. They come in, and you saw they get stunned. Perfect time to get headshots, even for the cops. Oh, and I actually missed him there. I'm not terribly good at shooting, so that's uh, probably one thing. And these ones, having a shotgun would be pretty good, which of course I have. And there's a, quite a few of them. Now, if you could take care of this one having my zombie vulture blender on top, then you would have even less coming air. Uh, and that's probably something that I would do. But either way, see, she's standing there. She's bashing. She's not triggering. She's probably slightly off. But either way, she'll come eventually. And we'll see them restart. And another one. Another one. Another one. Now, let's see. If I turn off... Ooh, which one is it? I think it's this one. Let's see if that one will avoid dropping them down. Yes. And then you could actually kill them melee when they come up here. And this would be a fairly fun way to uh, spend your horde. A lot of them will be taken out here. Not all of them, but if they come up here, you know, you maybe you bust them a little bit, but then you simply kill them in melee as well. And you can do that with, you can turn everything off. Let's do, turn this one off. Let's see here. Oh. I'm not fairly pretty good at that one. Now these ones are off. Want to do it even more interesting? Use it as a pure melee base here. Do this. And you just stand here to bash it. Now these ones will take some damage, so it's maybe not entirely recommended. But once that is the case, you know, you can go like, fine, it's getting a little bit tough. Let me do that. And of course I turn off all the traps. Switch them back. And they'll start falling down again and dying as they come in. Let's take care of them here with a, a vulture blender. Actually, let's do that. Do I have a blade traps? Blade trap. Let me just do that since we are enjoying ourselves here. Let's do this. Let's do this. And let's do, do this. All right, you could do something like this. And then you have... You connect that as well. Let's do that to all. Oh, let's do actually a switch. Switch here. And you connect it to this one, to this. This one you start then connect up to these ones. Now this one obviously takes a fair bit of electricity. So you might want to have a separate generator if you want to. But you see now these ones are spinning. I want to stand here. Let's wait for the zombie vultures to come in. Here's one. Come down. Yep, yep, now it's coming down. You're coming. And. Oh, you bounced right on it. Come on. Come on, don't go. Oh, come on. What a wuss. That's the problem if they land straight on it and actually they don't take any damage. And uh, eventually. No. Come on. Don't do that. It's like right below it. Okay, at least that one had. Uh, Yep, okay, thank you for showing that it actually does work. So you could spend the whole night just idling here if you wanted to. But beyond this, it's a pretty fun base, and again, less cheese than if you're having some partial block failure uh, pathing that is uh, fairly common to do in 7 Days Live because it's easy. But I hope you enjoyed this, make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you again next time. Special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. If you would like to join the Vedit community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link.